and it's Laura from Divine Light Yoga. Today I would like to share with you my top tips for introducing yoga and mindfulness to toddlers. So this age, also known as the terrible twos, um, can be a beautiful age. It's a really great um, time in which they're, they're growing, their development, their learning, their personality is accelerating at such a rapid rate. But it is also a time of terror and tears and tantrums. And I'm sure all of you caregivers, parents and educators out there would agree that it's a time where both children and adults need some yoga, some self-regulation and relaxation. One question that a lot of parents ask me is how do you do yoga with two and three year olds or even younger children? And it is possible, it's just tailoring it towards their needs and their interests, making, it sure, making sure it's interesting and engaging for them. So here are my top tips to try with your toddlers, whether you're at home or in a preschool or in a yoga studio if you're interested in doing toddler yoga in your yoga studio. So my first tip is to keep it simple. So whether you're doing poses, breathing techniques, relaxations, any kind of dance or movement, keep it simple. It needs to be achievable and directed but with more with a visual cue rather than auditory. So children of this age are really struggling to process uh, lots of auditory cues. They need to be able to see you demonstrate it. It needs to be simple. So keep the instructions very, very basic and make sure that you are doing it with the children. So keeping it simple is the first and most important thing when uh, considering teaching yoga to toddlers. My second technique is dragon's breath, also known as lion's breath. And this is a wonderful way to help children of this age release any excess energy, any heat, frustrations, or anxieties. So at this age, they really do struggle to verbally communicate any frustrations that they're having, any difficulties, uh, anything that they're upset. Sometimes they really struggle to communicate their needs or their, de their desires. And so the lion's breath or dragon's breath is a great way for them to release any frustrations, anxieties, or excess energy that they're holding on to. And if you're not familiar with lion's breath, it's an inhale through the nose and a forceful, audible exhale through the mouth with their tongue sticking out. So it looks a little bit like this. And as you can imagine, for two, two to three year olds, they absolutely love this. It's weird, it's wonderful, you're pulling a funny face, you're giving them permission to make this ridiculous sound and to stick their tongue out. And it really is giving them permission to release um, any unwanted or overwhelming emotions in a controlled manner. So dragon's breath is great and I would use it constantly throughout the session. So um, we're combining it with poses and movements. My third technique is to sing, 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 sing. So again, children of this age maybe are not processing everything that you say. They learn a lot quicker if it has a flow, a rhythm, and music. So you might notice that a lot of children's picture books do have uh, rhythm and rhyme in it. And that's because it really engages them and it's very easy for them to process that. Much, more, much easier for them to process the rhythm and the rhyme than it is to process instructions. So I sing all of the time when I'm working with children under the age of three. So I sing my instructions, so whether it's everybody tidy up or everybody do this or copy, 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 me do, anything, anything. You might have heard some of these um, very simple 
songs before, but uh, keeping it simple, keeping one rhythm so that they know that rhythm means it's an instruction. So whether you're asking them to do something with their body or you're asking them to do something within the classroom, such as um, putting on their shoes or rolling up their yoga mats, um, they, they will respond to this much quicker because they'll be able to tune into it. As soon as they hear that rhythm, they'll know that it's something that they need to respond to and it's an instructional cue. So sing, sing, sing. Let go of any inhibitions you have about your singing voice. Children do not care how beautiful your singing voice is. And I can guarantee it will make your life as a teacher so much easier if you sing with the children. My fourth technique is partner yoga. Simple, but partner yoga is a really great technique to keep the children engaged, keep them interested, keep them moving, and keep them together. So if you have ever taught a large group of two to three-year-olds, you will know that it's very easy to lose them. Um, not, not physically, but lose their attention. And it's easy for them to be up and moving and running around and they're over there and they're over there. And so to keep them all together, partner yoga or group yoga where they're physically connected is a really great way to manage um, the class. And as I said, it's really good fun. They really enjoy it. Keep it simple. So I like to do a lot of seated back-to-back -back poses and um, face-to-face poses. And I tend to just do a lot of forward folds with them. So you can change the leg variation. They could have the soles of their feet together, their feet out wide. They could have their legs stretched out in front of them or crossed. And they're going back and forth. You can do it slowly and fast. You can move side to side. Um, and it's very simple, but it's a really wonderful way to introduce some of the basic foundational yoga poses to children in a fun and interactive way. So my fifth technique is to introduce a relaxation to the children and to make it uh, accessible for them. So rather than asking them to just lie down, turn out the lights, be quiet, um, make, it, make it interesting, make it creative. So, Dim the lights, give them some eye pillows, spray some nice lavender oil around the room, put on some soothing music. So I really love Rocker Baby for, for this. Um, they do some really great tunes um, that are interesting for an adult to listen to. They're remixes, acoustic remixes of some fun, um, some fun songs. And it's very soothing for young children. And give them a breathing buddy, so you can give them uh, maybe a teddy or a soft toy to place on their belly so that they can breathe more fully. Ask them to lie like a star or wriggle around like a little starfish so that they're still um, moving a little bit, but they're starting to come, calm down to this relaxation. And my sixth technique is um, to have fun. <laughs> it sounds so simple, but I see so many yoga teachers, children's yoga teachers with this age group and they're so stressed out and the children can pick up on that instantly. And if you're stressed out, then they know that you're out of control and they, they feed off that, that stress and that energy and it's just not very calming, it's not relaxing and it's not healthy for you or the children. So no matter what, keep it fun. Make sure you're enjoying yourself and guarantee the children will then be enjoying themselves. And then my final technique is to keep it short. Don't expect children to do a 30, 40 minute yoga session because it's just not feasible for them. Try to scatter five or 10 minutes throughout the day. So this is potentially a little bit easier if you're doing it at home or in school, in a preschool. Um, even two minutes is great, just to scatter two or three minutes a few times throughout the day. And if you are wanting to do full 30 or 40 minute toddler yoga classes, then keep the activity short. So do three minutes of uh, one song, do a five minute story, do two minutes of a fun 
partner pose. So break it up into shorter segments so it's more achievable for the children and it keeps them engaged and interested because you really, even though we want to, of course, improve their concentration skills, it needs to be realistic and they're not realistically going to maintain that attention for a long time. So you need to build that up. That's something that they're still learning and they can enhance with yoga and mindfulness. So they're my top seven techniques for working with toddlers, either at home, in school, or in a yoga studio. So I hope you enjoy it and I hope you can guide your terrible two toddlers through um, this difficult time using yoga and mindfulness. And if you have any other tips or techniques that you like to use at home or in your yoga studio, then please do share that with our Divine Light Yoga community on our Facebook page, or you can write any comments underneath this video feed. And if you're ready to go deeper and learn more about your children, about children's yoga and mindfulness, then please do join one of our trainings. They really are unique um, because myself and all of the teachers that I work with have such a wealth of experience and knowledge, not just in yoga, but in education. And the program that we've put together, it really incorporates all elements of yoga combined with educational philosophy, behavior cycles, behavior patterns, um, focusing on behavior management and creating a therapeutic space. And it's teaching children about yoga principles and philosophy through languages that they understand. So play, art, storytelling, movement, dance, all of these are children's languages and that is how they learn. And so we like to incorporate all of these different elements to teach children yoga philosophy, practices and principles. So we really are a unique children's yoga school and if you're thinking about it, you're not quite sure if we're right for you, then take a look on our website at our video testimonials and see what other students have to say and see if it's the right fit for you, for your needs and your learning style and your interests. Well, I hope to see you all at some point, whether it's on our, one of our online trainings or our residential trainings. Thank you so much for listening and have a beautiful day wherever you are. Namaste.